Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to hear all of these wonderful B Plus podcast episodes completely ad-free, make sure you head over to Patreon or Podbean, where we are the featured podcast this week. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, up to $10 a month, where anything you want to help us with, it really helps out. It's going to help us grow the site. It's going to help us redesign some things. And everything that we get through this and through the advertising as well is all going straight back into the podcast so that we can get Aussie Graps out there for the rest of the world to hear about, for the rest of the world to see, so we can grow this mission of watch global, support local, and build indie wrestling. So if you want to be a part of that and get some really cool rewards like call-in shows, bonus episodes, ad-free like I mentioned, then head over to patreon.com slash the B plus and subscribe today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the Still real to me, damn it! Dummy, yeah. This is the worst town I've ever been in. Ball three. Tomas covers. Three handle. Family Redundzo. Mamma mia! And now. Unchained.media presents the B. Podcast with your host, Greg Unchain. It's me, Austin. It was me all along, Austin. Number four, Armbar. I will never retire. I still got 200 more. I got 200 more holes to lift. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, wherever the hell you're listening to this, B Plus players. Welcome to the B Plus podcast. I am your host, CJ. Today is Thursday, so you know what that means. It's time for the view from the WWE Universe, where we've changed things up this year. And we split the WWE programming into two blocks, where you've got the main roster block here today, the NXT and NXT UK block on Saturday with Greg and Big Boy Mikey. Joining me for this new version of the View from the WWE Universe is the B-plus Instagram queen herself, Danders. <laughs> How are you, Danders? I'm well. Thank you for that amazing introduction. I was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> yeah, my um, my friend called me the other day, everyone's favorite Insta-ho. I was like, oh, Insta-ho. that's so lovely. I'm sure that's meant to be an insult, but I loved it. Um, how are you doing today? <laughs> good, Dan. It's good. Now, how do you feel about joining us for the New view from the WWE universe. Oh, it is late. Like, I'm living the fun employment life at the moment, so I watch <laughs> Raw and SmackDown live, so I watch them at midday, and yep. um, so it feels like a lifetime ago that I watched Raw, but happy to be here, very excited to be uh, to be chatting along here. Sounds good. Now, did you get a chance to watch 205 this week? I did not. I All right. don't think I have watched 205 ever. I'm a bad wrestling fan. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what you're missing out because 205 was it was relatively right this week. I'll just smash out the results for that. Leading into the Royal Rumble, the main focus around 205 this week was the Fatal 4-Way for the Cruiserweight Championship, where our boy Buddy Murphy still holds, thank goodness. But this week we, are, we have Aiden English on commentary. Apparently he can cut 205, so we may see him on the 205 roster. Uh, but the first match was Humberto Carrillo. I hope I don't butcher that name, versus Grand Metallic, Humberto winning by a pinfall, and then a bunch of promos, and then the triple threat match, Hideo Itami versus Kalisto versus Akira Tozawa with Buddy at ringside. Buddy did get involved uh, in the match a little bit, causing some sort of powerbomb and attacking everyone individually, eventually eating a solid soul from Kalisto to sort of remove himself from that match, uh, with Hideo Itami actually going over Gaining a little bit of momentum coming into Royal Rumble. So it was pretty time. Fun. Yeah, it was uh it was alright. Not the best two oh five they've had, but um for surprisingly, main roster was really good this week. 
Yeah, absolutely. Just for like a 205 noob, does it go for an hour? Is that Yes. Yes, okay. it goes for an hour. Even though the wrestling seems to be like 15 minutes. Oh. They do like a bunch of packages lately. And I think oh. it's because of like the holiday season and with like two, I think Cedric Alexander doesn't have anything to do. And with Mustafa Ali getting pushed up to SmackDown, they're still finding new things. That's why Humberto got called up. Ah, more you know. Yeah, so it, it goes for an hour. It's sort of you get roughly half an hour, forty five minutes of actually wrestling, but it's occasionally maybe two max three matches. Ah, oh, okay. So it's but very. Yeah, I can probably start watching it. It's heavily featured by the Loser House Party. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but moving on. Moving on, we'll open the show with Monday Night Raw with Brock Lesnar opening with Paul Heyman cutting a, a promo about how Finn Balor is the underdog and how no one ever believed in Finn, but Finn believes in Finn and John Cena believes in Finn. And then I believe in Finn. We all believe in Finn, sort of. Vince comes out and uh, talks about how David was defeated by Goliath. But now Gol- David is reincarnated as Finn Balor. I didn't understand that. Can we just talk about how that, that is a – it's from the Bible, so it's Jewish slash Christian, and they don't believe in reincarnation. Ah, yeah, good ah, plot hole right there. Well done. When I heard that, I was like, that <laughs> makes no sense, old man. Go home, please. We're all just, we all just want Uncle Paul. Just give us yes. Uncle Paul. Um, yeah. But yeah, that part, like, there was a lot that didn't make sense in that. But when he said reincarnated, I'm like, reincarnated is a Buddhist prophecy, or not prophecy, um, like belief. It's not Christian or like Jewish. Where yeah. David, and, anyway, end rant. Uh, that part annoyed me. <laughs> um, I also am just a little bit over the whole look how small Finn is kind of feel. Yeah. Like, he's so small, look how small he is. But yeah. I just but, feel, especially like seeing Finn, sorry, seeing no, Finn's no. like stuff obviously in New Japan and things like that, that he was such a badass. And even in NXT, he was such like a force to be reckoned with. And now it's like, look at this little guy. He thinks he can fight. Oh, you're so cute, little Irish man. <laughs> I'm waiting for like someone to do a joke about Finn and his lucky charm somewhere. Like I, I'm, I don't know why, but I can just see, I can just picture Braun just walking out with a box of Lucky Charms and be like, "Here, these belong to you." <laughs> oh my god! And then we will get Horn Swoggle. Oh. oh, don't! I don't want to see the return <laughs> of Swoggle. No. <Nah>. No. Um, <laughs> what happened next? Let's have a quick look over. Um, so, so Vinny, Vinny Mac came out and he did all of that. Doesn't he look old? Yes. He, yeah, he's getting there. He's mm. certainly getting there. He's uh, aging pretty quickly by the looks of it. But that, that's what tends to happen after years of bodybuilding and muscle building stuff. You can look older. You can get really bad yeah. too. and steroid use. Oh, yeah, lots of steroids. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. I don't get what they're doing with Braun Strowman. I don't get why he came out. I don't. It's like no, I, I, either put him in the picture or take him out of it. He's distracting, I find. You know, I'm I'm right there with you because to me it feels like Braun's starting to get the Roman Reigns treatment. He's there for every main event moment, constantly in the main event picture, and he's getting shoved down our throats again. Like it's, well, I wouldn't say shoved down our throats, but he's sort of always on screen. Mm-hmm. Every time, every Monday Night Raw that I watched over the holiday period, he was on at least three or four times. And I don't know yeah. if it was because they need someone to cover that Roman Reigns spot or the John Cena spot, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But I feel as if they're like, hey, Braun, we don't have anyone. Go. Yeah. I just felt like that kind of muddied it. It took away from – I mean, it's hard enough to get invested in the Universal title when you don't ever see it. Yeah. Um, And I just feel like that part, it really took away kind of from Finn's moment. Um, But, yeah, I guess we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, and uh, sp- well, speaking of Finn's moment, uh, considering this is our first week back, I don't know if many of our listeners have actually heard, but Finn Balor has replaced Braun Strowman in the match for the Universal Championship at the Royal Rumble, which we'll we'll touch on a bit later. But holy hell, that was a good match last week. It really was. Um, I didn't actually catch the whole show 
um, last week. So I just kind of trolled the internet to see what the high spots were. And that match was considering how um, I had very low expectations, to be honest, and I felt like it really did deliver. It did. It certainly did. But with this week, Finn comes out, starts saying that he believes in himself, and Vince goes ahead and makes a David versus Goliath, Goliath match. Having Braun Strowman versus Finn Balor making Brock sit at ringside, that's always a bad idea. Mm-hmm. And here we have our first matchup of the night. Yeah, and look, I think it went okay. Again, I don't understand why having... I don't know. It feels like... with I get Brock's coming out because it is the take-home show. Yeah. But it feels like he's coming in, collecting his paycheck, and then going home. Like, he just he just stands there. Maybe some people are into that. I don't know. I think it's more of a fact that, no offense to Brock, but he sounds like a crying baby every time he opens his mouth. Mm. Like, he is this beast, this is machine. You expect him to have this, like, this deep voice that's like, you know what, I'm going to break you. But no, it's kind of like that. Yeah, similar like that. That was a weird sound. (laughs) It was very Velociraptor. (laughs) Um, It was, um, yeah, kind of a little bit Mike Tyson-ish. Where yep. you expect to have this big, um, this big booming voice, and then yeah, but probably should talk about the actual match. I don't remember too much from the actual match itself. All I've got here in my notes is Braun Strowman actually ate a uh, a sling blade, which I never expected Finn to be able to jump that tall, considering he's like the size of his waist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Solid. I don't know. But yeah, so Finn actually got a beat. Pretty decent bit of offense. Brock did get involved in the match after Braun threw Finn over the top rope into Brock. So then Brock catching Finn midair and just like throwing him over his head, being like, I'm done with you already. Oh, uh, and then um, oh, I do remember Bron- uh, Brock caused the disqualification. Certainly does with an F5 then, to Finn. Yeah, and so Finn wins by disqualification. So it's all a little bit of a nothingness. Yeah, um, yeah it'll be interesting to see what we see from um Braun Strowman from here. Yeah. Because he's kind of just in a little bit of no man's land at the moment. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I think he'll be a force to reckon with. I reckon he'll, if he's, I don't know if he's technically cleared, but if he does enter the Royal Rumble, I reckon he'll be one of the major forces to be reckoned with. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I'd be interested to see that. Yeah. So the next part, that was the Intercontinental Title Shoot, Intercontinental Championship match wasn't it with uh bobby lashley and apollo cruz i don't think it was a championship match i know apollo was like hey let's give me a match but uh leo rush previously in the promo was like no we're not holding an open we're not holding an open we're just better i'm sorry i'm so scattered um and then (laughs) they did the weird posing thing for about 15 minutes what felt like 15 minutes yeah to me that pose off had arnold schwarzenegger versus terry cruz that's all i got I got Triple H versus Scott Steiner circa 2002 <laughs> or three. That's what I got from it. Like, Wow. I didn't yeah. think of that. I don't remember. Like, when it comes to Scott Steiner, there's two things I remember is that promo about the 33.5% or whatever it was <laughs> and um, his, like, weird flex off with Triple H. I think it was 2003 um, in WWE. It was yeah, freaking weird. It was so weird. Um, I hope that this means that they're doing something with Apollo Cruz. I hope so too. He's so talented, and um, I, yeah, I feel like he has been wasted ever. I think he, to be honest, I think he got called up too soon. I think that they yeah. brought up too many people in that batch when he came up post WrestleMania, yeah. and he got lost. Yeah, I hundred yeah. percent agree with you on that. I think, as well, where he was, uh, he was formerly known as Yuha Nation in the Indies. He doesn't have the same skill set. He's not allowed to do as many of the high flying moves. I don't know if you've noticed it, but he can easily do like a four fifty splash with without hesitation. Mm. But I've never seen him pull it off on t- WWE TV. Yeah, because I mean, you would think that it's like I know they're a lot protect more protected because they do um, perform so often. But he's not. He's not wrestling every week, no. so it's not like he's on the show every week, so I don't know why they don't pull off the big guns for Maybe. him. He probably does do on. live shows, though. 
Oh, Think true. about it. I forget that wrestling exists if I don't watch it. <laughs> like, it was like I just thought that SmackDown wasn't on last week because I didn't watch it. I was like, oh, it's on. I just you're like, anyway. you know what? I'm going to cancel SmackDown this week. I don't feel like watching yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I thought that again was weird. I guess that um, I just can't stand Leo Rush. I know that that's the whole thing, but when he comes on, I just mute the TV because I can't handle his voice. See, I love Leo Rush. Yeah, I guess, look, he is doing his job. I'm such a mark that I just hate him. Probably. (laughs) But no, he's doing his job well. If he can make people hate him just by opening his mouth and breathing, he's doing his job well. (laughs) Absolutely. But with the matches, of course, we saw Apollo Crews and Bobby Lashley go toe-to-toe. Bobby Lashley winning via the spear to cause pinfall. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, tries to have his quick celebration, but then Seth Rollins comes out and interrupts. They yeah, seem like- that was weird. Was that that was when they met halfway on the on the entrance ramp? Yeah, and they had like this little met- face to face thing. That was weird. I didn't quite get that. Um, I think I it's like- all unfinished business. Yeah. Um, yes, Seth Rollins comes out and interrupts there. Yep. And then he takes on Drew McIntyre. That was a good match. Yeah, absolutely. I think that Seth really um, does bring out the best in people and WWE seems to be going all in on Drew McIntyre. Yeah. Every time I see him, I just, I get like Neville vibes and my head just goes, I'm a king of the cruiserweights. (laughs) I actually looked up like how much he weighs in Drew, Drew McIntyre's 280. He doesn't qualify as a cruiserweight. Oh, division, no. But, like, if we could get him as like Neville 2.0 going, I'm the king of the cruiserweights. Oh, no. He's uh, walking into me like, I'm the king of the universal championship. Yeah. I don't know. But oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I just, I love the way he talks. I love his look. I'm, I'm fully on board with Drew McIntyre. I don't yeah, even definitely. care that. Um, how hard they're pushing him. I feel I feel like he's getting sort of similar with the Roman Reigns treatment. Um, WWE are clearly like, this is the guy, but I guess because people are familiar with him from his previous WWE time and obviously his indie stuff, yeah. um, they're more on board with it. I, I think you're right. I think because people knew him as the Chosen One and as Drew Calloway and like Impact and I keep forgetting the Scottish place he wrestled for, um, but he he created himself... In this brand new character, the the moment he returned, everyone's just immediately behind him, and he's yeah. a bad guy, and everyone's like, "Yeah, this guy's fucking awesome." Yeah, and he's but it's almost like he feels justified in being like how how angry he is and things like that. He's like, "I want to make this division better. This division isn't good enough." Yeah. Um, as opposed to just being like, "I'm the best. I'm going to take all the belts." Yeah. Well, I like his new look on things and his new physique is fantastic as opposed to that lean little thing that he was back in like his 2010 run. So now he just looks like a monster. So I think that has it going for him as well and I can see big things in his future for Mania. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can see, I know that we'll probably get to this, but I can see him winning the Royal Rumble. I don't know if that's too predictable, but he's Ooh. he's been my pick since... Um, Probably about start of December. Yeah, it's a good solid pick, though. It's a good solid pick. Yeah. Well, we'll get to all those we'll predictions further in. Yep. The next match, of course, well, we have uh, Rollins defeating Drew McIntyre via roller. So Rollins gains a bit of momentum coming into the Rumble. Yeah, that surprised me that he did win so clean. Um, I thought yeah. they would have a bit of a murkier ending, but I guess since they're not fighting at the Rumble, then there's no need to sort of have. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe that will develop within the actual match itself. Who knows? Yeah. And then we have a, a backstage promo with Dean Ambrose being in this little dungeon thing, claiming, of course, he's going to win the Royal Rumble because everyone's saying that now. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I kind of like the Dean Ambrose heel turn, um, but I'm not 100% sold on it. Yeah. I think it needs a little bit more tweaking, but it's definitely one that could play on for a while. Yeah, I think it's just come pretty much at the same time as like Daniel Bryan's heel turn. Yeah. And I just keep getting them confused because they're both so self righteous. 
<laughs> I could just imagine someone making a meme of Dean Ambrose being like, I'm the planet's champ. Wait, wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, uh, so we'll get a quick little Dean Ambrose promo. I feel a match between the Loser House Party, or as most people know them, the Lucha House Party. I see what you did there. Uh, I hate Loser House Party. I just can't stand them. And Greg knows that. And, uh, to me, they're like the rip-off of New Day and Rey Mysterio. That's what I get. Yeah. As if they had a baby. They're, yeah, they're like El New Day. Yeah. I Pretty much. New Day is in Spanish. <laughs> oh, I wish um, I knew how to say yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I feel like, I feel bad that I'm not more invested in the Singh brothers because they are very talented. Um, they but they're booked so terribly that it's just like, um... It's yeah. just like designed to, that you don't invest in them and they're just kind of like a nothing. Yeah, I think um, I, I think when it comes down to it, the Singh Brothers needed to have a little bit more bigger build. They are fantastic in the Cruiserweight division, like amazingly well in the Cruiserweight division. But it's, yeah, the build on the main roster, not so great, especially getting teamed with Jinder. Like when Jinder was WWE champion and they got paired with him, that was a bad move. Yeah, especially when he turned out to be such a transitional champion. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so we get that get the filler match with Lucha House Party versus Jinder and the Singh Brothers. Lucha House Party get the win. Uh, quick little backstage showing of Dana Brooke doing some very bad acting with the current free agent and the top one percenter EC3. Wasn't that weird where she's like... That was so weird. What? How do you cook your eggs in the morning? And like, do you do protein? And do you weigh your food? I'm like, yeah. okay, we, we get it, Dana. And, and he's not even answering. He's like, he's like lip syncing as well. He's like mimicking what she's saying or something, and just flexing in the mirror. And I'm like, wow, you're such an ass. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would be more excited about EC3 if they hadn't sort of shoved it down our throats every show for the next for the last like two months. Yeah. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how he performs on the main roster, how yeah. quickly he'll get pushed because he is Vinnie Max Wet Dream. Like Pretty much. I I just also want to say congratulations to EC three for finally making the main roster. Because as Derek Bateman, he got released in NXT. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. I don't know too much about his back I know like his work in NXT, but I don't know too much about his, his backstory. Yeah. Well he used to be known as uh, Derek Bateman when NXT was a game show. I can't remember who his host was. But yeah, it was that season ended. He was in the developmental territory for like another three, four months. Mm-hmm. And then WWE pretty much just gave him a flick. Hmm. And because of his skill, TNA approached him immediately and were like, hey, we want to repackage you. We think you're great. And EC3 yeah. was born. He was born. Um, What happened next we got was a Baron Corbin versus Elias. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we have um, Elias, little Elias segment going to play the guitar, and of course Baron Corbin, as same as the last three months, interrupts him. Mm Mm-hmm. But the best thing about it was Elias cut Corbin's mic. That was beautiful. I um, I love Elias. I think that he's that he's awesome. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit disappointed initially because I loved his like whole gimmick of just mocking the um, the whatever the local sporting team was. Yep. Uh, he did it. I remember when it, they were in Melbourne, and he was like trying to make fun of Collingwood because they just lost the grand final. But like, <laughs> whole audience hates Collingwood anyway. So pretty much, yeah. Um, but yeah, are these two having a match anytime soon, or are they just both in the Rumble? I think they're just both in the Rumble. Yeah, I, I think can that see will be a little bit of feud building. Yeah, I can see one eliminating the other. That's all mm-hmm. I can see. Yeah. And I'm going for Elias to eliminate Corbin. Fingers crossed. Um, it, Corbin's another one of those ones I get confused with because I hate him so much. And then I'm like, well, I'm supposed to hate him. So that means that he's doing a good job. But yeah. See, that's the thing. Is I'm a little bit different. I hate him just because I hate him. I just don't like him. Like, I didn't like him when he was in NXT. I've never liked his charisma, never liked his look or his attitude. I think he has I, just, charisma. No, I don't think he does either. But. Yeah, he's just one that's never sort of piqued my interest at all. Like, his music hits, and I'm like, eh, bathroom break. Fair call, fair call. 
Promotional consideration paid for by the following. January is here and we are fast approaching WrestleMania season. Royal Rumble and the road to WrestleMania are around the corner, so the time to dilly-dally is past us. If you want to experience WrestleMania live, and who doesn't, let's be honest, you deserve it. The best and really the only way to do it is with all Aussie travelers. All Aussie travelers are new to the wrestling travel package game, but they are veterans at travel, and they have put together a package that cannot be beaten. For less than $7,500, all Aussie travelers are going to send you to New York, New York, with return flights, airport transfers, full accommodation, and tickets to the WWE Hall of Fame, NXT pre-show party, NXT TakeOver, WrestleMania, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, and more. The coolest part about these packages is that for NXT TakeOver, Raw, and SmackDown, you are going to be seated in your own private VIP suite, normally not available to the public. But all Aussie travelers have you covered, man. They got this locked down. It has its own bar. It has its own bathroom access and all the luxuries that a VIP box comes with, not least of which, of course, an incredible view for everything happening in the ring. All of this for under $7,500. They're practically giving these packages away, man. You'd be crazy not to check it out. So head over to All Aussie Travelers on Facebook. The link is in the show notes. And tell them that the B Plus sent you. And let's go watch WrestleMania in style. Uh, what do we have then, next? Was it a moment of bliss that we had? Moment of bliss. And can we just appreciate how nice her dresses are looking at the moment? She looked absolutely stunning. Like, she always looked beautiful, but she looked absolutely stunning. I, just, I remember her walking out and just thinking, yeah. Buddy Murphy is a lucky man. <laughs> he is a very lucky I man. I keep forgetting they're even a thing. Yeah. But like, no, he, like, must, he must be funny or something. Like, she is so beautiful. <laughs> but props to makeup and hair and wardrobe and that, because they do put their women in such amazing gowns. And each week, I think that, it just keeps getting better. And Alexa yeah. Bliss is sort of that queen of that fashion statement. Yeah, absolutely. She's definitely stepped up her game from like coming out in like t-shirt and leggings yeah. that she kind of used to. It's always bizarre to me when you see people like Alicia Fox come out and it's like she got so dressed up to just stand there for about 45 seconds. I was like, it's so bizarre. Yeah, I couldn't understand yeah. it. I'm like, why don't you just be comfy? Put on a hoodie. Yeah, now... Am I getting my weeks confused? She was interviewing Rhonda, or was that last week? No, she interviewed uh, Rhonda last week, didn't she? I think she... No, she interviewed uh, Paul Heyman last week where she revealed the new women's tag team championships. Yeah, so it was... Was it Rhonda this week? No, it was supposed to be Nia Jax this week. Um, but everyone oh, yeah, sort of her kept getting... BFF. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm... I'm very tired. It's late. <laughs> that's okay. It's what I, you're probably you're in Melbourne, aren't you? I am. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it's like ten ish there, isn't it? Ten thirty. Yeah. There you go. Um, we're, we're recording this at night time, guys. So we are very tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think the, the important part of this was we got the debut of Lacey Evans. Yes, the the technical on screen debut because she was seen in backstage segments last week. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this week we actually have Lacey Evans coming out and confirming that she's in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, which is very exciting. I think that it, I think that it would have been better had they just put a debut in the Rumble instead of being yeah. like, "I'm coming out. I'm coming. She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Here she give is. The, she's going to be in the Rumble." Yeah, give her the AJ Styles treatment. Yeah. Um. In contrast, she was bizarre, whatever she was wearing. Like, her, I think she stole from my grandmother's wardrobe or something. She <laughs> but she's, like, the first bizarre. lady of NXT. She's supposed to be, like, the whole proper... Well, she's the first lady of whatever main roster show she's on now, but she's supposed to be the whole proper I am better than you, I look down at you, you're all peasants sort of situation. Yeah, her little, so... like, two-piece skirt suit looked like it was made out of carpet. So, I was like, what are you wearing, mate? Get your shit together. Well, and that's then a ass hat. I'm not allowed to swear. Yeah, and like the weird like fox fur thing. It yeah, I, I can't understand it. But I love how uh, Alexa is officially cleared to return to the ring and will be performing in the Royal Rumble as well. That is awesome. That I is think that she huge news. Um, they've done really well to include her while she's been injured, but 
There were yeah, so definitely. many rumours that maybe she won't be cleared um, again for a long time. So hearing that she's coming back is awesome. Yeah. And uh, after that, we get a quick uh, filler match again. Heavy Machinery versus the Ascension. Heavy Machinery getting the victory in their debut match on Monday Night Raw. So congratulations to them. Yeah, it's nice of them to bring the Ascension out just to squash them. Yeah, isn't that their job, though? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. once once their contracts are up, I honestly think they need to go elsewhere. They need to get their TV time when needed. Yeah, or they need to rebrand because they're weird, yep. like, Legion of Doom kind of Mad Max thing. It worked in NXT. Um, it just hasn't translated to the main roster. So they And no. with so many tag teams now pushing for a spot, um, they're just... They need some repackaging. I think they're both very talented, but um, yeah, their gimmick at the moment is just not going to work. Yeah, they they need to be rebranded, like you said, and they they just need to come up with something new. Yeah. Uh, following or that, go to AEW either or or AEW. That that's an option. Uh, speaking of AEW, actually, um, the revival who. Will, Actually had a match on Raw this week for the Tag Team Championships against Rudin Gable and lost again, mm. which is pathetic. Kurt Hawkins was the special guest referee at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but the rival reportedly asked for their release from their contract. What do you think about this? Um, I haven't been invested in the revival since their call up, so I think it's the a really wise move for them if they are going across to AEW. Um, I think I hope that their like whole name is "fuck the revival." I hope that's what they're called. <laughs> AEW. Um, That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry if I'm not allowed to swear. Greg. No, you're good. Um, yeah, I think that they're not getting the time. It's yeah, again, probably just not translating. Maybe they've just been booked poorly. They want a fresh start. Who knows? Maybe they want more time with their families. Some people like spending time with their families. Yeah, yeah. You know. I, I think I think um, I think they just haven't been booked properly. I mean, the revival have so much talent; they they just don't get to show it. Yeah. NXT they obliterated the competition, and now it's just kind of like, hey, yeah, we're still here. Hashtag F- FTR. Was it them or was it the Vaude villains that Vince McMahon just absolutely hated? I think it might have. I been think it was Vaude villains. Oh, okay. I get those two. They came up at similar times, so I kind of they just did. lumped them together. Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah, give them a fresh start. I did like this match, how it kind of had, like, um, Kurt Hawkins seeing the kind of cheating that was going on um, yep. and him being good guy Kurt Hawkins. Um, yeah. Rude and Gable I'm not even really all that excited about either. Maybe I'm just not. I think I'm too much of a SmackDown mark. <laughs> um, so, do they? Who are they facing this weekend? Uh, Rudin Gable. You know, I don't even think they have a match this week. They don't even have a match. Yeah, that's bad. Oh, that's like, because no, that's because they defended on Raw. That would be because they defended on Raw. If you defend on Raw, you don't really have to defend on like the pay per view coming up. I found that in a lot of things. Yeah, I or think if that. You, yeah. Tag teams should be defended at all, at least at the big four pay per view. I know they've got a lot of belts going on, but I think that the tag team should always be defended. But that's yeah. just that's just my opinion. Um, I feel like they're a little bit of a nothing in a nothing state, which kind of is a representation of the Raw Tag Team Division at the moment in general. Yeah, pretty much. That would be why Young Bucks were like, "Hey, nope, fuck you." Uh, that's pretty much like why everyone yeah. from the Elite just kind of turned their backs. Yep. Like, we've seen what you've done to Monday Night Raw. We're not touching it. Yeah, it's a, it's a mess. But um, yeah, speaking of uh, Hawkins, Zack Ryder come to make the save as the Revival beat down Hawkins after the match. So could we see the Edgeheads return as a tag team? I would love that, but I'm also loving Kurt Hawkins' whole losing streak thing. Um, so I don't know. It would be nice to see Zack Ryder get back onto TV with some TV time. Yep. Because he is just the... It's like the Cinderella story, except if Prince Charming wanted to date one of her sisters instead. <laughs> like, she just stayed at home cleaning while 
Prince Charming married her sister. That was a weird analogy. It was, yeah. Yeah. I would like to see them back together again yeah. and see Zack Ryder back on TV. I, I think you're right. it would be good to see you Ryder back on TV. Hawkins maybe get a win, but I'd like to see the Hawkins and Ryder run a losing streak a little bit more. And then out of yeah. nowhere, they kind of just talk to Vince and be like, look, I know we haven't won much, but give us a chance to get the titles. Let's see what we can do. And just out of blue, just win the tag team titles. Yeah, that would be, like, be interesting. Similar to the MVP storyline back in, I think it was 2009, he went on like a 30-plus match losing streak. And the first match he won within like six months was a United States Championship Open match where he just like randomly won the US title. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Yeah, you're testing my memory there. I don't remember that at all, but fair call. No, fair it, call. Look, I was watching a lot of that stuff like not too long ago, so it's kind of fresh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like that would be pretty cool. Like there's all of a sudden this fatal four way match for the tag team titles and, um, similar to how B team, um, got their opportunity, Hawkins and Ryder get the same one. Yeah. Um, I'm not too, I'm not too fussed about it. I I mean, it'd be good to see him doing something. Yeah. just, Just get them on TV. Yeah. Absolutely. And just give them someone to be competitive against that you're not going to throw under the bus in the yeah. tag division. That's me. That's my whingy about the Royal Tag Division done. <laughs> Speaking of streaks, as we go to the next match, run, was there something in between? No, it just went straight into the women's I think it went straight into, yeah. Yeah. Sasha Banks cuts an amazing promo, and I think that they've she's been booked so poorly that I forgot how good she is on the mic. Yeah. The only downside I saw with this part when she was having the confrontation with um, Ronda was that it did expose how uh, I don't want to say weak, but Ronda is still developing on the mic. She was stuttering on her words, and that is this the right part? Am I talking about the right part? Yeah, no, like, yeah, about no, the they right come part, yeah. Each other. yeah, and she had the the weird, yeah, stuttering, and it just kind of really showed both how strong Sasha is, and then how that is sort of Ronda's area for yeah. development. Now, it shows how fresh she is into the industry too. Yeah, and the thing is when I get that Ronda's supposed to be the face and Sasha, I guess, is the heel in this scenario, but when people say things like Ronda, like, you're telling me I deserve this, I deserve to face you when I'm a four-time champ, I've been here since, you know, I have was at the start of the division, I'm like, she's kind of right. Like, I feel like Ronda's booked, obviously, to be this dominant entity, but it's like yeah. so much has happened before her and I just feel like, when she says things like, you're a worthy competitor, it's like, well, she was a worthy competitor before you were even here, mate, like when you were getting kicked in the face. No, so, that's exactly right. Um, Shout out to Holly Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the interesting part I found about this match was that Natalia took the oh, – Natalia taking the pin isn't the shocking part. It was the Ronda's team losing. Yep. So I'm, I'm guessing because Ronda didn't get pinned – that doesn't affect her winning streak. It technically doesn't. It affects her her streak overall, but it doesn't affect her single streak. She's still undefeated in singles matches, but however, she's no longer undefeated as a whole in WWE. Yeah, undefeated streaks are so risky. Yeah. I, not even risky. Like, I can't think of one that has ultimately paid off. Like, if you look at Umaga, look at Rusev, Asuka is back on top now but i have a feeling it was a long time coming it took her nine months to recover from that loss yeah and i assume that she's getting fed under the bus again soon i think this is i think that she will be a transitional champion i don't think that large lengthy winning streaks have ever worked after the person has has lost how did what was goldberg's run like i i can't remember much of goldberg's run but didn't he like go like 300 like, matches undefeated and then win the world title? Yeah, I am I never watched WCW. Um, so I have no idea. That's a yeah. massive gap in my... I got into wrestling when I was um, like eight years old. So it was like 98. I never watched WWF. I probably should watch more, but... Well, I, I, would rec- I, I would recommend hitting up some of that Goldberg stuff because those matches were pretty decent. But um, yeah, like it does affect a winning streak, no matter what, when it, whether you're losing a tag team or in a fatal four way or something. But it's um, yeah, she's still undefeated in singles matches. 
but I guess we sort of see how we go at Royal Rumble as well. Yeah, I think the sad part about this is we know that, and I know we're going to cover this when we talk about the Royal Rumble in a little bit, but um, I think we know that Ronda's winning. Uh, and if that means that Sasha and Bailey go on to win at Elimination Chamber, um, which I think that they deserve to, um, I'm I'm okay with that. But, yeah, I think this was it, the end really surprised me. And yeah. I love how, as such, like someone who is such an advocate for women's wrestling, women are just main eventing Raw and it's no big deal. Like it's not a big announcement. It's just like this is the biggest feud at the moment. This is going on yeah. last. And I'm just loving that. Yeah, and I am I'm so proud to see how the women's division has come in the last couple of years where they went from being an afterthought to now main eventing. Like, yeah, that, it makes me so happy. Absolutely. And someone who was very skeptical when Ronda came in, she is doing far better than anyone imagined. Yeah. Um, it's gotten to a point where it's like she's doing really well for someone so new to just she's doing really well. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think yeah. her coming in did help put the, the name of the women's division out there a bit more. Because yeah. there were there were a lot of people who were like, "Oh, Ronda Rousey's gone to wrestling. Like, what's that about?" And yeah, now yeah. the ratings gone through the roof for the women's division. So it's fantastic. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I was hugely skeptical of her, and I still sort of am with the way that they are booking her. I think that there's once she does lose, um, it's going to have some effect on her character and things like that. But let's yeah. enjoy the ride in the meantime. No, that's exactly right, and. We'll enjoy Monday Night Raw as SmackDown Live takes over the B-plus podcast. Speaking from one women's division to another, the man Becky Lynch opens the show for SmackDown Live. Oh she my is God. on fire. Cuts a quick promo about wanting to headline Mania. She wants to main event Mania, and you know what? These women can do it. I absolutely... That was my biggest pop for the week of, like, of everything. Like, when she said... Everyone's telling me, telling the man what they should be doing. The only thing I should be doing is main eventing WrestleMania. Yeah. I think I've watched, I watched that part like five times. I love her. I love her energy. I love how she comes out and she's, because she's not full blown heel now, she's just like this really strong character, just unfuckwithable. I'm all yep. about her. I love her. I, my only disappointment was that she came out first because I was like, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> it's like, I oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that was that whole thing was glorious. Um, and then when Asuka came out and Asuka was getting all up in her face and then um, normally I, d I don't like when Charlotte comes out and then in, because I feel like we get her all the time. I feel like it's always Charlotte yeah. interrupting other people's matches. Uh, but I really like this. I really think it showed the strong dynamic. I am worried it's pushing for a triple threat at Mania, which I do not want. No, I, no, I hope not. I, I, I really just book, not. just book Becky and Ronda. If it's not going to be Becky and Ronda, make it Charlotte and Ronda. I, I would rather Becky not be in it than it be a triple threat. You know, th this is the sad thing is I actually don't want Ronda going into Mania as the champion. Yeah, I mean, I was saying. I was saying today um, to Welchie um, that if, as far as I know, if, say, Ronda loses the title and, say, Becky doesn't win, say that there's some interference there and they just have a one-on-one -on -one match, yep. it will be the first one-on-one -on -one traditional rules wrestling match for a non-title women's match ever. Does that make sense? One-on-one -on -one yeah. traditional rules, non-title match for a women's division in WrestleMania history, which is insane. That would be pretty good. That being said, if it's – I just want – I want two women main eventing WrestleMania. There's no better time to do it. And if it yeah. can't be Ronda and Becky, make it Charlotte and Ronda, make it Becky and Charlotte. One, a combination of two of those three women and have the other woman going for the other belt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100% agree with you. The only thing I don't get at the moment with this whole women's division thing is Charlotte's goth face. Yeah. Get it? <laughs> yeah, she's uh she's a bit weird. I'm 
Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. Um, I try not to say too many nasty things about her just because I feel like if I saw her in person, like, she could beat the shit out of me. She's a big girl. <laughs> she just randomly one day listens to her podcast and yeah. she's like, hang on, hang on, I, I want to meet this Danders person now. <laughs> yeah, I heard your bitch ass was talking <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> These things um, happen in my dreams. Um, but yeah, I loved this part. I thought it was really good. Asuka um, doing the sneak attack on Becky. I yeah. love that because it was so out of character. Yeah, she's that like, shocked me. Yeah, she's quite traditional, quite honourable. But for her to do the cheeky um, bump from behind, yeah, loved it. I'm very excited for their for their match this weekend. Definitely, definitely. Uh, oh, the, next. Uh, after the brawl, of course, you, they've got a little bit of um, Oscar and Becky brawling backstage as well. Then you have Naomi versus Mandy Rose with Sonya Deville at ringside. I'm getting Attitude Era vibes with this feud. I really it's, am. It's so cringy, just the whole fighting over someone's boyfriend. It's very um, Bella Twins fighting over Daniel Bryan. Um, oh, I forgot it's about like, that. Yeah, it's like AJ Lee and whoever she was dating that week, like that whole. <laughs> it came. Especially no, like, it I, like John Cena. <laughs> I get it for um, – Mandy Rose, because she is still quite inexperienced. Yeah. Um, I get to having like a more storyline based as opposed to t- physical um, based feud. But Naomi's too good for this. Like she's far too good for what's going on. And like the whole thing with like where Mandy Rose is in the towel and it's like yeah. her wrestling gear covers less than that towel. This doesn't <laughs> make any sense. She's more covered up than you ever see her. Like, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, I think I think the most amount of like this is gonna sound really bad, but the most amount of skin she showed, I think it was last week, was she wasn't wearing her boots. Yeah, what a hoe! <laughs> what a hoe! Old bootless Mandy Rose. I'm gonna call her Mandy <laughs> Hose from now on. Um, yeah, no, I hated this. I just felt like we went from the cream of the crop to hey, we're not quite ready to fully go into respecting women. Yeah. Just yet. Yeah, I, th- I think that's what it is. Uh, but, of course, with with the match, we get Mandy Rose defeating Naomi via pinfall after the destruction by Sonya Deville. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I can see it now, Mandy and Sonya being one of the teams in the Hel- 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 in the Elimination Chamber match. I can yeah. see that coming. Which I'm fine with. I love them as a team. And, I look, I love Mandy as well, but just not in this. Um... But just not in this story. Yeah, I don't like this story at all. Get it over and done with. Um, it would be different if maybe like Mandy had a like a male counterpart as opposed to Sonya Deville. Yes. And then you could have a bit more kind of mixed tag and things like that. But you wouldn't want to split up the Usos anyway. So there's, no, there's that. No, pretty much. Um, yeah, hated that. What was next? <laughs> Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Christmas has come and gone and with it, the disappointment of those secret Santa staples, the shave kit, the sports hygiene packs, and seasonal socks is fading. As we roll on, though, into the new year, it's time to make resolutions. So why not resolve to look better in 2019 and get yourself the gift that keeps on giving and never disappoints, Threadbox. Threadbox is a subscription clothes shopping service which for as little as $40 per month will send you a box of personally curated goodies straight to your doorstep. I get the $160 package, which comes with over $200 worth of fresh goodies each month. Kept me looking fly for all my Christmas engagements this year. You get to communicate with the Threadbox stylist assigned to you by email regarding what it is you need, and they will tailor the box accordingly. And in the unlikely event that you don't like what they send you, you send it back, they will replace it with something new, and make note of the things you don't like so that they can avoid that kind of thing in the future. Threadbox is a truly unbelievable service that no man should be living without, so head over to threadbox.com.au today and use our code THEB15 when you check out to get 15% off your first box. Next match we get is The Miz with Shane McMahon versus Cesaro with Sheamus. Uh, This is an interesting story. Uh, I'm excited for, for this whole thing with Shane and Miz. Um... Yeah, every sorry, yeah. I feel like I'm talk, talking so much. Um, no. Everything about the whole Miz and Chain thing should be awful, but I'm just loving it so much. Like, it's just got 
the right level of ridiculousness. Um, yeah. Plus, the Miz can he can carry a bad storyline. He could, you know, I would listen to the Miz read a shopping list. I am his microphone work <laughs> is is amazing. Um, I could just imagine an hour long podcast of just the Miz's voice being like two eggs. Yeah, must three listen to potatoes. radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt that this. Yeah, the match was weird. I felt it um, kind of seemed a little bit. Um, it didn't have a great flow to it, for lack no. of a better, lack of a better word. What was your thoughts? Seeing as I'm talking so damn much, <laughs> I I don't I don't understand it. Um, personally, I have views for Miz for further down the line. Uh, I think this is just a filler moment. That's all I'm seeing this as, and I think it's just going to end with. I'm just going to put one of my predictions out there. Just the bar winning anyway, because Shane and Miz just don't have chemistry. Um, that's all I'm saying. I think that this is just a filler moment until Royal Rumble. I am seeing Shane and Miz winning, and that leading to ultimately to a feud at WrestleMania. I see the two of them going face-to-face yeah, face at WrestleMania. Because um, Shane McMahon seems to need to insert himself every year. Yeah, pretty much. But Shane, Shane's inserting is like, here's a table, here's a coast to coast, here's me dancing, yeah. and I'm done. And I'm jumping off something. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm yeah. jumping off something ridiculously tall. Yeah. Uh, but then after the match, uh, Shane does attack Seamus after Cesaro gets the pinfall. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that we see the retaliation by the bar putting the co-besties through a table. They sell the shit house out of that. Yeah. They even sat through an ad break and laid on the floor. I'm like, guys, just get the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, that was – especially the Miz, the faces he was pulling. I was like, I'm hoping that he's not legitimately injured. Um, no, we we no, would have had something by now. Yeah, no, he's just a killer seller. Yeah, definitely. Now, we, the next up we get the Mustafa Ali promo. Since this guy has come to SmackDown, he has absolutely killed it. Yeah, he was on 205 Live beforehand, wasn't he? Yes, he was the yeah. heart of 205 Live. Yeah, he is killing it. I had, full disclosure, before he came up, no idea about anything about him. And he is just killing it. He's, and this match was no exception. This was um highlight of the night for me. Like, I absolutely love this match. Yeah. He's, we get this match with uh, Mustafa Ali and Samoa Joe uh, later on. But just this promo was fantastic. The next promo, however, even better, where we get AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan supposedly face to face with Mick Mahan. Sorry, I had to put that in there somewhere. Shout out to Matt Hardy. <laughs> uh, with with Mr. McMahon supposedly being the the go between person, um, but Bryan refuses to get into the ring. He's like, "I'm not getting in the ring with you. You're unpredictable. You're crazy. You're, no, I'm not doing it." And just Daniel Bryan as a heel, claiming that he's no longer the WWE champion or the world champion. He's now the planet's champion. I reckon that Tree Hugger Lucci has a strong case for suing for gimmick infringement. <laughs> like, I just, like, I love heel Daniel Bryan, but in my head I've been calling him um, home brand Lucci. Because <laughs> that's just what he reminds me of. Um, yeah, I can see that. I completely forgot about this. I'm sorry, full disclosure. I haven't made any notes about it, but I do remember Daniel Bryan coming out and yelling his fickleness, and um, he is fantastic, and I can't believe how well he's executed being a heel after being um, his the massive comeback. The and then, yeah, but then sort of being, like, stuck once he was not in the in the main event scene, him kind of being um, in this weird limbo Yep. To then just come out as such a monster heel has been amazing. Yeah, definitely. He's done absolutely fantastic. Uh, of course, we get like a little AJ Bryan brawl, pretty much it. I think the the thing that sticks out the most out of this entire promo was that Daniel Bryan called his boss, Vince McMahon, a parasite. Yeah. That, that's, the, that's the thing that sticks out the most. I, I was just kind of like, wow, that's uh, okay, well done. Yeah, I just in in line of that, it's I'm a little bit overseeing so much of Vince McMahon 
considering it's only been like three weeks or whatever. I just I feel like he doesn't need to be on both shows. I don't know why he's inserting himself into this feud. Um, he yeah. just looks old. He, looks he old. does. Very it just much. reminds me like that I am old when I see him. <laughs> uh, we get uh, Samoa Joe versus Mustafa Ali. Joe winning by submission in a fantastic match. Mm-hmm. I, I th- I'm pretty much I'm, I'm convinced that no matter who Ali gets in the ring with, it's going to be a good match. Yeah, and it was also great to see Joe doing some some killer work as well. It's good to see him like in the main event and then getting a win as well because I feel like it's been forever since he's been knocking on AJ Styles' door and yeah, yeah. Every yeah, time was... I see him, I'm just like Wendy. That was like two months ago. Yeah, it feels like it's been a long time since he's been a dominant, a proper dominant force. Yeah, definitely. And we get the match of the night, which is, for me, this was my match of the week, actually. Uh, Rey Mysterio versus Andrade Cien Almas in a 2 out of 3 falls match, where technically Rey wins after Samoa Joe interferes. But this was absolutely fantastic match. Sorry, absolutely, yes. <laughs> um... Yeah, the the notes that I've taken from it's it's called Lucha Two Electric Boogaloo, um, is what <laughs> they've called this match. Um, and yeah, it was really uh, Ray Mysterio. He just hasn't aged at all, and this was just fantastic. And I love what they're doing with Almas. I feel like they're making him look really strong. Yeah, um, which is not something that you see when you come up from NXT these days. No, that's exactly right, and. Uh, after this, after the match, Joe, of course, interferes, causing Rey Mysterio to win the match. He cuts a quick promo about he's in the Rumble, he's going to win, and then Randy Orton comes out of literally nowhere, just lays him out with an RKO, and he's like, I'm done with you. This was so weird. It was, it, it was, was weird, it, but it was good. It was good, but I'm like, it just feels like Randy Orton's, similar like Brock Lesnar, who's just coming out to get his paycheck. I was like, this doesn't even make any sense. But hopefully it leads to some development down the line. Hopefully it's something down the line. Yeah. But that pretty much covers everything for the main roster. What was your moment of the week? Um, Becky Lynch. Becky yeah. Lynch is like, like, I just, I love everything about her. Um, I don't have, I have two WWE t-shirts. I have uh, Balor Club from when he was in NXT. And yep. I have Becky Lynch's The Man t-shirt because I just, I love her so much. I love what she's doing for women's wrestling. Um, she just comes out and kills it every week. So she doesn't even have to wrestle. I just listen to her talk and I'm like, yeah, you are my sunshine. That's pretty cool. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm a sucker for WWE shirts. I'll probably buy too many of them. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the main roster. Leading into the Royal Rumble preview now, uh, we have a solid nine matches two of which are on the pre-show. First one being the United States Championship match, Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Who have you got? Uh, Rusev, just because I feel like as much as Vinnie Mac wants to squash Rusev, he wants to squash Shinsuke more. Um, I can't believe that Rusev's on the pre-show again. Um, but I guess it's a, it's a massive card, and I feel like last year yeah. we had four matches in total and for this year to have nine um, yeah it's a big a change lot. so yeah Good. i think rusev uh will hold on yeah I, i'm i'm with you there i'm actually thinking rusev will hold till mania yep now then we get uh the cruiserweight championship fatal four-way our boy buddy murphy defending the cruiserweight championship against akira tozawa Hideo Otami and Callisto from the Loser House Party. Who do you have? Um, Buddy Murphy. I can't see anyone taking it off him. It feels like he's had it for ages, but it's also it's only been like three months. Yeah. Uh, so fingers crossed he hangs on to it. I can see. I would prefer Buddy Murphy to keep this. Um, as I've always said, is I will boycott 205 Live the moment Buddy Murphy loses that title. I I, I can't what stand the idea. Loses- what if he loses it to come up to the to like Raw or SmackDown? If he's given a decent push on Raw or SmackDown, that'd be fine. Mm-hmm. But if he's like, if he loses the title and then starts jobbing to like 
Aiden English on 205 or to Jack Gallagher, I'm going to be like, what are you doing? No, stop this. This is an idea that's sort of been a little bit stolen from Kayfabe News. Um, what if he has like a twin magic thing with Kurt Hawkins and it's like Kurt keeps being about to get beat from these matches and then Buddy Murphy just comes up because they look the same um, to me. I get them very confused. Um, comes up from under the ring and does like the twin magic thing like the Bella Twins used to do. That's an idea. It's definitely yeah, an it's, idea. It's an idea. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> hopefully he hangs on to it for a little bit longer. Yeah. I think out of the other three competitors, though, the person I would like to see take it would be Hideo Itami. He definitely deserves it. Um, oh, yes, he deserves it. Yeah, I just don't see it happening. Not at the moment. Uh, then we hit the main show, the Royal Rumble. Uh, we'll start with The Bar versus Miz and Shane McMahon. I personally have The Bar for this. Who do you have? I have The Miz and Shane McMahon. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to go to them then it seems quite brief, but I think that they'll hold on to them until Elimination Chamber. Something yep. will happen, and then they'll have a fight at Mania. Yeah, I can see it happening. Give Shane his moment of truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we have uh, Ronda Rousey versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. I have two. I don't see... The thing is, I don't see Sasha Banks taking the championship. Um, I hope that Becky Lynch gets involved either in this or Ronda gets involved in Becky's match to help yep. build that feud there. But I just can't see Sasha Banks taking the belt away more than anything else. More than like I, I can see Ronda losing. I just can't see Sasha being the women's champion. Yeah. I, I think I think you're right. I can see someone coming out and interfering, causing a loss as such, but by disqualification, so the title won't change hands. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, Sasha Banks going on with Bailey to win an Elimination Chamber. Um, but yeah, I, my money's actually on Sasha Banks to win by disqualification. Okay, it's a solid. Wait, you think Sasha's going to win by disqualification? Yeah. So, oh, sorry, no. Uh, Ronda will win by disqualification. Sorry. Okay. Who so, do you think is coming out? I can see. Personally, I can actually see Charlotte coming out. Okay. Because Charlotte, not only does she have nothing to lose at this point, she's not in anything but the Rumble. She could go on for the Rumble and be like, I'm still challenging Ronda. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Because she's Charlotte Flair and she doesn't have to win the Rumble to do that. Mm -hmm. But she also, she got, sorry, Ronda cost Charlotte the women's title at TLC. Yep. So she could be like, you know what? I'm going to cost you a loss. Screw you. Yep. yep. That's, that's pretty much how I see it. Um, and then, of course, we get Becky and Asuka for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I have Asuka. Yeah, I can see it being Asuka. I wonder if it's – I guess it will all depend on when the matches take place. If Asuka wins, I can see Becky Lynch coming out in, in the Rumble. Yeah. Um, which – because before she got named for this match, I had it pinged. Becky Lynch is going to win the Rumble. She's going to ch- challenge Ronda Rousey. That was in my head. It was set. Um, but now it's like, no, this is not how it's going to go, which is good because it's nice that it's not predictable. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I can see Asuka holding onto it and then because that would mean that the SmackDown Women's Championship at WrestleMania is probably going to be mid-card. Yeah. Which I can't yeah, really do that if Becky is the champ. No. So it's main event or nothing for Becky by the sounds of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Then we get AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE title for the ninth time in a row. Yeah, I know. It's so oh frustrating. Goodness. I love um, them both, but guys, find someone new. Yeah, exactly. I see Daniel Bryan holding on to it. I think he's so hot right now. Yeah, yeah definitely. Daniel Bryan is so hot right now. Um, <laughs> it's their shoulders. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I see him, yeah, beating him and then AJ Styles. I don't know, maybe he's in the bad books a little bit. I don't know, he hasn't been booked very strongly, even though he's still in the title picture. It's this whole stuff with Vince McMahon has been weird. Maybe Vince McMahon will get involved. Oh, like a Montreal screwjob moment? Yeah, maybe not that level. (laughs) 
<laughs> a no. match that leads to like AJ versus Vince at WrestleMania. <laughs> God. Oh, God. What's in a dog walk on its hind legs? Oh, um, gosh. Next, uh, Brock Lesnar versus Finn Balor. I I can see Brock winning, but I'd love to see Finn have his moment. It's got I just in my head it's got to be Finn. I can't have Brock Lesnar anymore. I can't. No. Um, and is it like I was under the un- impression that he was leaving? Yeah, well, he um uh, reportedly he signed an, an additional six months um because with the UFC drug testing pool, mm-hmm. um the I think it's called the USDA or something. Like, yeah, you can re-enter the pool now, but you've got six months till you can actually get tested. So he's like, all right, well, I'm not going to waste six months. I'm going to go get more money elsewhere. So yeah. he re-signed, and then after Roman was like, hey, I have leukemia, Vince was like, oh, shit, put it back on Brock. Mm. Like, that. that's all I can see. I love the idea of Finn Balor winning, but Brock Lesnar, with my pick, Drew McIntyre, um for the Royal Rumble at WrestleMania. That's a match. That's a Brock Lesnar match I could probably actually watch. The two of them, I think that they're very well matched physically. Yeah, definitely. That would be a hard-hitting match. Mm. But um, the the surprising news about this as well was I read online, I can't remember if it was um, Sports Skater, I think it's called, or like WrestleZone. I can't remember exactly where it was. But... The rumor was that Brock Lesnar actually requested this match against Finn Balor. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I think he's a very good sort of heel character on TV, but he seems like he's quite a respected guy um, yeah. in the locker room. So it wouldn't be surprising to me that he would want to wrestle against Finn Balor, who has such like a, a strong indie reputation. Yeah, not so much an indie reputation, but he's got such a big skill set too. Well, that too. Like, he would put Brock to the limit, similar to how Daniel did. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting if they book it on that sort of style match. Definitely. Um, But, yeah, I think that Brock will win it. So, coming into the main two matches, the Royal Rumble match. Who do you have for the women's? I don't know. Um, (laughs) If... I think it's going to be Charlotte. I think it's predictable. But if Becky isn't in it, I think it's going to be Charlotte. I think that Charlotte's going to challenge Ronda. Or if Becky wins it, I think that Becky will challenge Ronda. I don't, cool. just don't cool. really see any of the other. Looking at the entrance, I just don't see. It's a fair like, call. Yeah. I, I, I personally, if Becky's in it, I'd love to see Becky win. Mm-hmm. But I want a Dark Horse to win this. I actually don't want Charlotte to win. I just want a dark horse. I just want, like, Carmella to just be like, hey, I'm number 30, I'm going to win. Yeah. And just actually win it. Having like, a look, Just having a look at the entrance, like, you've got, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of filler. Or there's, even Ember Moon. Two. Yeah, Ember Moon I'm fine with. Like, there's the three members of the Riot Squad, and they've just been booked into the ground, so it's hard to yeah. get behind any of them. Actually, you know, I my pick outside of Becky Lynch would be Ember Moon, and Ember Moon picking Asuka at Sorry. WrestleMania. Yep, that would be awesome. I would love that. Um, I didn't even sort of think of someone challenging Asuka. Um, <laughs> so there's, so there's, only seven, there's only seven spots left. Yeah. Um, that, that's, of course, like two legends, a call-up, like... Yeah, yeah. I think that we'll see, obviously, a couple of NXT. Hopefully we see, um, I'd love to see Io Shirai yep. come up. Um, obviously Shana Baszler. See, yeah, I would love to see Tony Storm. I don't think that will yes. happen, but that would be awesome. That's who I think I want most for a surprise entrance. Um, so, yeah, probably, I guess, um, two legends, maybe one or two returns. Um, and then some NXT call-ups. Yeah, definitely. Who definitely. do you have for the Men's Royal Rumble? This is where I get a little bit difficult. I I will tend to watch and focus on the Men's Rumble match pretty much six months prior uh, because Royal Rumble is my favourite pay-per-view of the year. Like It smashes WrestleMania, in my opinion, because it's so unpredictable. But I've had... There's a lot of pressure, I feel like, on the Royal Rumble. 
Like I think so too. You expect it to be amazing and it's so often a let down. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I've had this, I've had one particular scene in my head since Survivor Series. Sorry, since Summer Slam. The Miz and Shane lose their tag team match. Mm-hmm. Miz goes into the Royal Rumble, wins it, and challenges Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. Face versus the heel. I would, that would be awesome. Um, That's where I see it because I, I can see the WWE want to push the Miz as the face of the company at the moment because they don't have a face of the company now. Or a face of SmackDown, I should say. Yeah, because he is such a good talker. He is. He's fantastic on the mic. And AJ Styles potentially maybe taking time off after Mania, so they need someone to hold the title for a bit. To me, that's the Miz. Yeah. However, it's a bold, it's a bold call. Definitely, it's it's a bit out there. Uh, however, if I was to pick a Raw superstar, it would have to be Seth Rollins. That'd be awesome too. I I, I can see Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Title. Yeah, I I would get on board that. I mean, you know my feelings. I've or in my head, it's already most definitely Drew McIntyre, because that's like I'm always wrong, but yeah, <laughs> in my head, I'm like. Hey, you've only got 29 chances of being right, apparently. Do you know what grinds my gears? Lots of things. But in particular, when it's when they're like, someone's like, I'm going to throw over 29 participants. It's like, no, you're not. No one <laughs> in the history of the Royal Rumble has eliminated every single other opponent. You're going to eliminate. If you want to outlast 29 opponents, okay. You're not yep. going to eliminate 29. I the can just imagine it. 12? Yeah. Oh, 13. Sorry, 13. Greatest Royal Rumble, Braun Strowman. Oh, God. If you count Saudi Arabia shit. I don't I don't count that. But some people do. Anyway. Um, Definitely not Greg. I mean, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> yeah. No, I think uh, I think that we're going to get Drew McIntyre. Yep. Um, hopefully he – they go – they seem to have gone last year with, like, pairing people up with – I know the last couple of years they've had um, – Roman Reigns being in the final two to give a massive pop to the actual winner. Yeah. So I remember when Randy Orton won in 2017, everyone was just screaming because the alternative was Roman Reigns and no one wanted to see Roman Reigns win. (laughs) Remember when we all used to hate Roman Reigns, pre-cancer Roman Reigns? Yeah. Pre-shield Reigns. So mean to him. Um, (laughs) That was the the pre-Brock Lesnar era. That's what that was. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so I think if they finish him up with some people who you maybe don't want to see win, maybe John Cena. Yeah. John Cena yeah. Drew McIntyre in the final two. Or you just yeah. randomly have like R Truth versus Drew McIntyre in a solid fifteen minute one on one match. <laughs> in my head I'm like, that's ridiculous, but like R Truth is a good wrestler. He's just he like, is. He's booked as a character now, which is fine, it's working for him. Yeah. Well, for your surprise NXT call ups for that, who would you have? Um, Johnny Gargano, I reckon, could, yeah. um, could come up. Yeah. Um, and maybe Alistair Black would probably be my other one. I, I can see Alistair Black hitting it. Um, but depending if... I'd like to see uh, Tomasa Ciampa make an entrance as well. Yep, absolutely. But uh, returns. This is, the, this is the night for returns. I'm yep. calling Kevin Owens. Ooh. Ooh, who was the other guy that I just thought of? I was like, I have another guy in my head too. Um, Kevin Owens would be the main guy to return. Yeah. Um, or Matt Hardy. Ooh. That'd be, Matt yeah, ha- no, that'd be awesome. Matt, ha- Matt has declared that he's gotten the green light and he can return. Well, that's awesome. I think that they've been really smart with booking um, R-Truth and Carmella as the number 30 spots because they have been – there's so much pressure on the number 30 spot because if your favorite person hasn't already come in, yeah, then you're expecting it to be similar with like Roman Reigns in, I think it was 2017, when he came out in the last in the last spot and everyone was booing and like there's I remember there being that um like that clip of all the reactions and people yes. just losing their shit because everyone thought it was going to be Samoa Joe or it was going to yep. be yeah, and it was him. So I think that they've done a really good job by taking the pressure off that number 30 spot. 
Speaking um, of um, speaking of Roman Reigns memories and then number 30, I just want to put this out there. I was at a bar watching that one. And the first thing I can remember, as soon as his music hits, was a full glass of beer flying past my head and smashing a screen. <laughs> oh, that was a, as soon as that happened, I was like, well, Roman's winning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was brutal. Yeah. Um, I feel sorry I for him. Turn, I'd like to see someone like, proper dumb like boogeyman i think boogeyman came back a couple of years ago didn't he yeah like um or like oh, all the people i'm thinking of are dead i was about to say crash holly God, <laughs> i did a sorry to go on a little bit of a tangent i did like a drinking game on monday night because it's my life i was i was watching the 2000 rumble and you take a um drink for everyone who was dead and halfway through <gasps> Yeah, so many. That's brutal. That I've got to try so that one. Many. Yeah, it was like, um, I don't. British Bulldog was in there. Um, Big Boss Man, Crash That's, Holly, Test, China. That's like awful. every third competitor. <laughs> it was very, it was very depressing. I don't recommend. But I'm sure, like, that's only two thousand. That's only twenty years ago. I'm sure if you go back to like ninety five, you'll probably yeah. be on the floor. Anyway, sorry. Who are your surprise or other? So you've got Kevin Owens. Anyone else? You know, not really. Um, I'd like to see, like, I don't know he can't compete, but I'd like to see Christian's music hit one more time, considering he just, like, flew off into nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even if he's just kind of like a walk-in, walk-out. Actually, no, you know whose music I want to hit? JBL. No, he's a racist. <laughs> I just want his, I love his music. Yeah, he plays music and then it's... Someone he else. he breaks he breaks Santino Morello's record. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> we should probably wrap up because we have been talking five ever. Five ever. Wow. Yeah, the the one one more thing I do want to touch on before we do uh, call the call the boots is is that a good term? I don't know. Sure. But uh, one more thing I do want to touch on is the rumors spreading around all elite wrestling, WWE. And the cleaner, Kenny Omega. Do you see him entering the Royal Rumble? I completely forgot about this. I don't. I don't see him. Um, I don't see him entering the Rumble. Um, I would love him to, but I just I don't see him not signing with AEW. I, I think to me, I, I've got, I've just got like a fantasy moment here. It's just like flooded through me. I had a premonition. <laughs> Could you imagine the WWE's Royal Rumble, the number 30 spot's supposed to hit. Truth is nowhere to be seen. Next thing you know, there's a phone on the big screen. Someone picks it up off the announcer's table and it's Kenny Omega. He doesn't even get an actual entrance. He's just kind of there. Yeah. Or like he's attacked our truth backstage. Yeah. And, and just, just yeah. in that thirty spot, everyone's like, "Oh, it's it's our truth." Everyone knows it, and then all of a sudden, it's like Kenny Omega. That is some fantasy book in there. Yeah, you're coming through the view from the WWE universe this year. You will realize that I am huge on fantasy booking. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I just I don't see it happening. I would love it, but I don't see it occurring. But that is, yeah, that is everything for the review from the WWE Universe this week. Where can we find you, Danders? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Rachel Danderfield, on Twitter at Danderfield. It's like Dangerfield, but with a D instead of a G. Um, and don't add me on Facebook because we're not friends. <laughs> well, my name is CJ from CJ's World on Facebook and CJ's at, at CJ's underscore world on Instagram. But we collectively are the B plus Russell on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit. We are the B plus wrestling everywhere else, except for Patreon, which we now have, which is just www.patreon.com forward slash the B plus. If you want to get in on our mission, watch global support local. That is a place to do it. Every dollar that comes in goes into growing the show and helping to get the world out about Aussie Grap scene where you can get ad free episodes, custom episodes, and all sorts of awesome rewards on there. So get around it. Thank you very much for listening. Like, share, and subscribe. Leave us a five-star review if you do like what we do. And as always, thank you for listening. Hold one. Arm drag. You're not doing this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just...
made the list. Oh my God! So, no speak English. Dummy. Yeah. Goodbye and good night. Ball two on bar. This is the worst town I've ever been in. It's still real to me, damn it! Come in. Yeah. Hole three. The moss covered. Three handle. Family good uncle.